Well, it's very good to hear that lots of people are busy with these kinds of research. I didn't, really didn't expect that. Um, well, here it says the first genome-wide association study, but maybe we're not the first. Um, but I'm actually very excited to present these results because, well, I'll show them in a minute. I think they are very uh, hopeful. <coughs> Still no financial interest to this close. Um, the educational objectives of this talk will be the concept of genome-wide association studies, we call it GWAS, um, again some basic genetic terminology, uh, I just heard some, some explanation about GWAS, I'll try to explain it in a little bit different manner, uh, comprehend the outcome and the importance of large numbers and cooperation when doing these kind of studies. So first I'll explain why we're doing this. What is it? And then I'll explain the study and with the materials and methods, results, and what can we do with these results. Again, I show you uh, this uh, genetic spectrum because I think it's very important. It shows in the left upper angle shows the Mendelian disease, which run in families, which you can study with, for instance, linkage analysis, which has uh, rare mutations which have a high effect on causing a disease. And what we're now going to talk about is common variants in genes. We all have variants, we are not similar. And these common variants, they can also cause common disease. And for instance, cause sporadic cases of the Petrez disease, which don't run in families. And this is what you can study with GWAS. So, we choose this because we want to study non-Mendelian Dupuytren disease and another important reason is that these studies are highly successful. Um, they're only recently possible because you need chips with lots of uh, markers on it and since 2007 these are all genes which have been discovered. And you see, uh, maybe it's hard to see, but this is for instance chromosome 1, chromosome 2, and this is in the end uh, the X and the, and the Y uh, chromosome. And these are all genes discovered in, for instance, diabetes, in cancer, etc. Well, maybe even more now. This, this uh, is from 2009. Well, I'll have to explain some basic genetic concepts again. Um, with genomization studies, we study common variants, and the variant we use is a single nucleotide polymorphism. It's a difficult name, we, we, uh, we just call it SNP. And this is a single nucleotide polymorphism, so a single base pair, a variation in single base pair. And for instance, in this figure we see this, so we have a single, the location of a single base pair where individual one has a C allele and a G allele. And at this same uh, location, in another individual, we have a variation, this individual has T and an A allele. When combining hundreds of thousands of alleles, we uh, we get a fingerprint of an individual. And this is what we call genotype. And this is what we, what we do in this, uh, this study. Uh, here you see the concept of genome-wide association studies. We first genotype individuals, so we make fingerprints of them, and we use chips, high-density chips, that means we use about 300,000, well, Nowadays are also chips with one million different markers or SNPs. And what we do then, we use a case control design. So we compare the frequencies of certain alleles at these markers between cases and controls. And if, for instance, a certain allele, for instance a T at a specific location is far more common in cases compared to controls, then this allele, this, this marker is associated with disease. And you expect to find your disease gene at that uh, uh, marker location. And in the end, you, you, we will see the whole genome, so chromosome 1 to chromosome 22, and on this genome you find the markers with the lowest p-values, 
and these are associated. And at, at these peaks, you will find your genes which are involved with the disease. But because we are testing, well, thousands of, of individuals, and we are testing them at hundreds of thousands different locations, markers, you have a multiple testing problem. That means that by chance alone you can also uh, get a p-value of 10 to the power of minus 5, for instance. So you have a really high cutoff before you call something significant. I'll discuss that later. And another issue is that because of this multiple testing you have to replicate. When you do this and you find your associa associations, you have to replicate this in another cohort. Uh, you, just, you have to do it again and if you find the same locations then you can be sure that this is real. Okay, there's one concept I would like to explain because we're using chips with about 300,000 markers. But we know that these markers, these SNPs, there are about, well, 3 billion in our genes, in our DNA. But we don't need to test them all because we know that certain markers are correlated. So for instance, this individual here has at a certain location a G, then you can be sure that at another specific location he has a C. Same here, same in the other individual. When you have G here, you have C there. So you don't have to test three billion of these. You can, you can, you can do with these, uh, these chips we have now. This also means that if you find a significant marker, this can be directly in your gene, but it can also be the case that the, the red marker, which is on your chip, which is significant, is not in your gene, but is correlated with another marker, not on the chip, which is actually in your gene. So when you find a significant marker, you have to study the region of correlated markers. Okay, so that was the, the basic genetics. Um, so this is what we want to do. We're using this GWAS in finding location and finding genes in Duplicitans disease. And how did we do it? Uh, we used a multi-center study uh, with uh, six big uh, hospitals in the Netherlands. And in these hospitals, uh, we uh, asked every Duplicitans patient who visited the outpatient clinics to participate. Um, and then we collected blood and, of course, uh, questionnaires. And from this blood, we isolated DNA. Um, at the moment, we collected, I think, a bit more than a thousand cases. Uh, but uh, I'll show you now our preliminary results. Um, we're actually analyzing, well, in this study, we have 864 cases. As we speak, we are analyzing 960 cases, but it takes some time to compute all these, uh, these, uh, these results. Um, and as control group, we used genotyping data, the soft fingerprint data of a really large biobank in our hospital, where they are collecting thousands of individuals, uh, and they will follow these individu individuals for about 30 years to do a prospective uh, uh, epidemiological study. Sorry. Um, and the good thing about this is that these controls are from the same region, the north of the Netherlands, and they are genotyped with exactly the same chip in, the, in exactly the same lab. So th these are perfect controls. And what we used, well, it's just another, another chip. We used a side to SNP from Illumina, which has 300,000 markers on it. Well, when you do this genotyping, you have to do quality control, and I don't want to talk too much about it, but you have to correct for errors made in your genotyping, and you have to check your samples and your SNPs. And another thing is, you have to check if there are ethnical outliers, because you have to remove them from your sets, because you want your populations and your cases and controls to be exactly the same. And you also have to check for relatives, but you can all see that in the fingerprints. There's lots of information in there. And after that we did uh, statistical analysis, which is actually a chi-square test of allele frequencies between cases and controls. Uh, before I show you our results, 
um, I'll show this uh, plot, it's, it's a QQ plot, and this actually shows um, that <coughs> what we found is real. Uh, we see in red, we see the significant values, the p-values of our associations. And they are compared to what you would find by chance, and that's the, the black diagonal. And then we see that from a certain high p-value, we see all these dots, not on the diagonal. And these are real associations. Yeah, well, here are our results. What we see here is called the Manhattan plot. You could also call it the Miami plot. <laughs> we see uh, here chromosome 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to 22. And what we actually see is the p-value, so the level of significance. We see that on the vertical axis, and it's a minus log um, measure. That means that when it's 5, which is the blue line, means actually 10 to the power of minus 5. And everything above this line is suggestive of significance. Uh, but because we have this multiple testing problem, we also have a very conservative p-value we use, and that's the red one. That is uh, 10 to the power of minus 8. And everything which is above here is definitely significant. And what we see then is that there are two chromosomes with highly significant results. This is chromosome 7, the blue one, and this is chromosome 22. And what we see there, every dot is a marker, is a p-value of a marker. <coughs> and we see it seems like these are all on the same position, but that's not true. They are next to each other. And that's why it seems they are in a line. And these three markers all point to exactly the same position. And that's the same what we see here. And that's where we find our genes. Uh, here again I show you the p-values of these top SNPs on chromosome 7, which are 10 to the power of minus 15. And what we see with this marker, this marker has an odds ratio of 1.8, 1.9, excuse me. That means that if you have this marker, you have 90% more chance of developing the disease. Well, this one's 1.6, etc. And this is on chromosome 22, and we also find a region, because these SNPs are next to each other, on chromosome 22. Okay, so I'll talk about, do you know what association studies, I, I showed what it is. Well, we did all these things. We did the case control study, we just saw the, our p-values, we know our regions, but this, the thing we have to do now is replicate. And, well, I hope to find colleagues who would like to join us in, uh, in building a new cohort of Dupuytren's patients and replicate this and then zoom in on these genes and solve the problem. Thank you.